Let's go to, uh, speaking of Kyrie Irving, uh, Nick Friedle does a great job covering the NBA for ESPN. He made some comments that were interesting about Kyrie Irving and the Nets. Uh, Rob G., we couldn't find the sound. He said it on ESPN. But read us his comment. Yeah, Nick Friedle was on one of those ESPN shows. Not sure exactly which one, but he was talking about Kyrie and the Nets. This was before the Kevin Durant news broke, obviously, that he would be uh, rescinding the trade offer. But here's what he said about Kyrie. He's got to play. He's got to be a part of the team every day. And he's got to play at the level that everybody in the league knows he's capable of. But he hasn't shown in the last couple of years. So is it possible to regain that trust? Absolutely. Kyrie's an incredibly talented player. One of the best guards we've ever seen in this era. Having said that, the team and organization, they don't trust him. And that trust has eroded over time. All right, he didn't drop any revelatory bombs. No, it's not like, right. oh my God. Right, what is right. Woo. I mean, we, we pretty much agree with everything he said. And my comment here, Ephraim, is how could you trust him? Now, I'm, I'm rocking with Kyrie this year. If I'm the Nets, and I said this from during the season, I said, look, if I'm the Nets, I'm telling Kyrie, you should opt in for this last year because we're not giving you a long-term deal. <laughs> we just can't. And, and not do, don't do it rudely. Don't, you know, try to tell him off, make him feel bad, whatever. But just be, Kyrie, we love you. We believe in you. Your game is to die for. But you just haven't been around enough, man. I mean, really, for us to commit to another three, four years. So opt in. Let's go for this chip. And and then we'll take it from there. And if you give us 100%, then we do. We can't get a better point guard. I mean, this is what I'm saying if I'm the next. Right. And so we'll sign you, but we just need to see you this year. But my point is this, Ephraim. Even if Kyrie, and I think Kyrie is a very smart guy and smart enough to recognize, look, if I want to get that last bag, because this will be probably his last big contract, Mm -hmm. get that last bag, then I need to be great on and off the court this year. But even if he does that, Ephraim, if I'm the Nets still, or any team for that matter, in the back of my mind, I'm still like, I don't trust him fully because I'm like, once he gets the money, then what? Is he going to start taking weeks at a time off? You know, is he going to pull some other shenanigans? And so there's no, you just, I don't care if Kyrie's your favorite player in the world. You couldn't trust him. No. You just can't. You you can't. And you're right when you say that Kyrie should be buttoned up and ready to go because this is his contract year. Absolutely. This is a contract year. Not only a contract for the Brooklyn Nets, but an NBA-wide contract year. Because if your own team doesn't trust you, then what makes you think someone else will? Right? And and you have to be and and the narrative on on you is that you are not dependable that you put yourself over the team those two things when you're playing a team sport the one thing you cannot have as a coach and as an owner is someone who puts themselves above the team that's why we had the problem with Tom Brady deciding, hey, in the middle of training camp, right. I'm going on vacation. Right. That is a classic. I'm putting myself, I'm more important than the team, which is fine in boxing, golf, MMA. You can do all of that by yourself. Yep. yep. But, Tennis. W- but when you, when other guys, when four other guys on that court, 10 other guys on that field rely on you. And you you exhibit selfish behavior. You'll never have the locker room, and you'll never be as good mm. as you can be. Mm. And you mentioned other teams. They are looking at this, and they're saying, "Okay, Kyrie's at home. 
He's wanted to play at home. He's playing for the team he grew up rooting for. He has an all-time great running mate, great team in general. His best friend. Right. Who's a Yes, who's a great friend of his. He has a player's coach. Let's put it that right, right? Who basically lets him do what he wants. He picked the coach. Right. <laughs> and he's still giving me issues. Still. He's still taking hiatuses. What in the world is he going to do in Minnesota? <laughs> when, when, in, in, in Atlanta or wherever, you know what I mean? He would end up. I mean, even the Lakers, and I said this earlier, Ephraim, yes, if I could trade for Kyrie, certainly I'm doing it. He's far much more of an upgrade over Westbrook, and he has worked with LeBron. But even that, while I think it will work, <laughs> I can't say I'm 100%, right? Cause I, I don't know. I, Kyrie could wake up tired of LeBron one day. Like he tired did in Cleveland. The third guy. Like yes. he did in Cleveland. After winning a championship. Literally, you know I want to run my own team. I'm like, wh- wait, what? How many rings could that team have won? Man, they had And it's cooking. not like we can't say, yeah, they would have kept winning it because obviously Golden State – and other teams were really good. But they would have had a shot. But, yes, they could have won another one, maybe two more, maybe. And so, and that's the thing a lot of guys don't realize. Kyrie wanted his own team. Man, if he had won, say, two or three rings with LeBron, he would have got as much love as he could get. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, everybody, yeah. Everybody would have known, yeah, LeBron was the best player. But, man, you would have got major league love. He would have been on that top 75 team. He would have most definitely been on that top 75 yep. team. And this is an example of what his behavior and his decisions, what they've done to his career. Right? He's making these decisions himself. No one is imposing these things on him. Right. Right. And you made a terrific point by everything that he possibly wanted was correct in Brooklyn, and he still blew it up. It still wasn't good enough. So what could any other team offer him and have the confidence that he would come in and 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 and, and be the guy that they need? It's how people looking at KD. Dude. You had everything in Golden State. And it's, again, you brought up, okay, what he's done to his career. Sure. I, I think Kyrie's a Hall of Famer. I think he's going to be somebody people talk about for decades because of his handle and all that stuff. It's, but everybody's not convinced he's a Hall of Famer like I am. But you brought up what he's done to his career. Kevin Durant's similar in that, yes, we know he's a Hall of Famer. Obviously, he's one of the all time greats, tw- top 20 players ever to lace him up. You probably say, but I, I said this. I was texting with a, a former coach today, Ephraim, and I said, if KD had stayed in Golden State, and I'm not mad at him for leaving. I, I would be mad at you for leaving Brooklyn before you even really give it a chance. But I wasn't mad at him because I got it. You want to, you know, show you can do it your own way. But here's the ironic thing, and I, this would not have been true, Ephraim. Because what was the true fact is that Golden State could have won another championship without KD, right? Because they did. But had KD never left Golden State and they won it this year with him, the narrative would have become, oh, y'all can talk about 2015 all you want. But they, they couldn't win it anymore without KD. They lost to Bron and Kyrie in 16. They lost to Kawhi in 19 without KD. And then KD comes back and they win it again. Like the narrative would have been KD is the man there. And all that top 10 talk for Steph would have been for KD. Absolutely. But guess what? Ego. Right? Ego. Selfishness. Yeah. All of those things. Those things matter, man. When you play a team sport. Like you, you, you got to make decisions. And I want to go to Brooklyn. I want to play with my friend. Now you want to get out of Brooklyn with your friend. 
what, what, what are you doing, brother? You were in a situation where you went to a team where the two-time MVP of the league took a backseat to you. Right. And allowed right. you to drive. And you couldn't take it because someone called you a name. <laughs> so one of your teammates called you a name and said, we don't need you. That's right. what I was talking about when yesterday I mentioned how sensitive he was, that he would overreact to something like that. Now they boys again. So, right, think, though, right. so think about that. You couldn't have been boys then, like you, you know? You right. let that You're bother right. you so much that you have literally just, you know, put a, a, a huge gap in your legacy. 